You know, there are American heroes who don't like this idea. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial space flight in the way that you're developing it. And I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that um, because those guys are, yeah. You know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. It's difficult. Did you expect them to cheer you on? So they're hoping they would. What are you trying to prove to them? What I'm trying to do is, is to make a, a significant difference in in spaceflight and, and, and help make spaceflight accessible to, to almost anyone. 2008 was brutal. Phew. Um, yeah, 2008, we had the third consecutive failure of the Falcon 1 rocket for SpaceX. Um, Tesla almost went bankrupt. We, we closed our financing round 6 p.m. Christmas Eve, 2008. It was the last hour of the last day that it was possible. We would have gone bankrupt two days after Christmas otherwise. And I got divorced. That was like rough, man. If, if things had just gone a little bit the other way, it, both companies would be dead. And, I, and I, like one of the most difficult choices I've ever faced uh, in life was, was in 2008. Um, and um, I think I had uh, like a, maybe $30 million left, or $30 or $40 million left in 2008, and I had two choices. I could put it all into one company, and then the other company would definitely die, um, or split it between the two companies. And but if I split it between the two companies, then both might die. Um, and you know, when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something, or building something, it's like a child. Um, and so it's like, which one am I going to let one starve to death? I couldn't bring myself to do it, so I put I, I split the money between the two. Fortunately, thank goodness, uh, they both came through. Um, so for, as, I, as I said, for, for SpaceX, the first three launches failed, and uh, we, we actually were just barely able to scrape together enough parts and, and money to do the, the fourth launch. If that fourth launch had failed, we would have been dead. So multiple failures along the way. Um, I, I tried very hard to, to get the right expertise in for, for SpaceX. I tried hard to, to find a great uh, chief engineer for the rocket, but it, not, the good chief engineers wouldn't join, and the bad ones, well, there was no, no point in hiring them. So I ended up being chief engineer of the rocket. Um, so if I could have found somebody better, then we would have maybe had less than three failures. When you had that third failure in a row, mm -hmm. did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. There, there are a lot of negative things in the world. There's a lot of terrible things that are happening all over the world, all the time. Uh, there are lots of problems that need to get solved. There's lots of things that are, yeah, that are miserable and kind of get you down. But the, life cannot just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Can't, that can't be the only thing. They need to be, they need to be things that inspire you, that make you glad to be, to wake up in the morning and be part of humanity. That's why we did this. This guy called Tsiolkovsky, one of the early Russian rocket scientists, the great saying, Earth is the cradle of humanity, but you cannot stay in the cradle forever. It is time to go forth, become a star-faring civilization, be out there among the stars, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness. I, I find that incredibly exciting. Uh, th that makes me glad to be alive. I, I hope you feel the same way. 
there are certain things that are necessary to ensure that the future is good. Um, and uh, some of those things are in the long term having long term sustainable transport and sustainable energy generation. Um, and uh, to be a space bearing civilization and for humanity to be out there among the stars and be a multi planetary uh, species. Um, I mean, I think the, the being a multi planet species and being out there among the stars is important for uh, the long term survival of humanity. And uh, that's one reason, kind of like life insurance for life collectively, life as we know it. Um, but then the part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure and it makes people excited about the future. Um, now if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring. How do you choose your team, based on what? Well, um, I suppose honestly that it tends to be gut feel more than anything else. Um, so when I interview somebody, my interview question is always the same. It's what do you just, ask? I said, tell me the story of your life and, and the decisions that you made along the way and why you made them. And then, um, if, and, it, and also tell me about some of the most difficult problems you worked on and how you solved them. And um, that, that, that question I think is very important because the people that really solved the problem, they know exactly how they solved it. Uh, they know the little details. And the people that pretended to solve the problem, they can maybe go one level and then they get stuck. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. And then that, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? Uh, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hot up, we had just one computer. So the, 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 the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. The final thing I would encourage you to do is now is the time to take risk. As you get older, your obligations increase. So, you, the, and once you have a family, you start taking risk not just for yourself, but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that uh, before, you, before you have those obligations. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. Thank you.